afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you, Lewis, for sharing that great music with us as we were waiting. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Shirley Wheeler Massey, Executive Director of Queens North Borough Citywide Office. And I want to welcome all of you to our Queens North Teacher Recruitment and Information Fair. And also thank you for taking the time to join us for this exciting event today. For our special guests, our Queens College students joining in today, you'll have the opportunity to hear from our Executive Superintendent, Mabel Sardui, our Queens North superintendents and their teams to hear about the great offerings available in our Queens North districts. A special thank you to Dr. Fusco and Dr. Perone for partnering with us today with this, on this event. And before I turn it over to our executive superintendent, I just want who will share greetings. I wanna share a few housekeeping items. Uh, for our students joining us, please be sure and ask for everyone to keep yourselves muted during the presentations if you're not speaking. Um, there's also a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen um, that will allow you to post and pose questions to us. And uh, we'll be answering those questions either in the chat or during our Q&A portion of the session. And lastly, please note that this session will be recorded today. I hope you find today's event informative and helpful as you begin your journey as an educator, hopefully with the New York City Department of Ed and Queens North. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to our Executive Superintendent, Mabel Sardui. Thank you, Executive Director Shirley Rila Massey. Thank you so much for putting this together. And Dr. Fusco, thank you so much for partnering, part, partnering with Queens North. For our students, I am elated to be able to say the class of 2021, our future teachers and educators. I am the first to say that I'm very proud of each and every one of you for your efforts, for your hard work, and for finish your finishing. You'll, you'll, I'm sure there's a few loose ends still. Um, as you're finishing your coursework to become an educator for the Department of Education, I hope that you choose to be part of our, our department. I've been in education for 35 years. And every year that I am with the Department of Ed, I love what I do. I remember my second grade teacher like yesterday, Miss Zucaro. I want you to remember who was that teacher that made a difference in your life. It could have been elementary, it could have been your middle school teacher or teachers, it could have been a high school teacher, and I remember my first English professor at Hunter College, Mr. Evans. So two teachers that I remember their names. Why do I remember their names? They were innovative, they were fun. They saw me as an individual. And so I ask you, you as you embark in your future, to get to know your students well. Get to know who they are as people. Because what will intrigue you and continue your fire in your belly is when you get to know your students and their, and their families. And then you can incorporate those cultures, those interests, those chats into your lessons. That's what makes Mr. Evans stand out for me and Ms. Zucaro stand out for me. They saw my potential and they saw me for who I was and who I am. And so be in a space when you go into that classroom where you are vulnerable and you show of your, yourself, whether it's your pet, a, spe, a special dish that you have, 
a special holiday that you celebrate, let them know about you. Open those doors to them because they want to know. They want to know who you are, what you like, what you're about. And then you can teach them anything and everything, every content area. I know this is the early childhood group right up my alley. Um, I was an early childhood teacher, assistant principal, parent coordinator, principal, superintendent, and executive superintendent. Uh, senior cabinet leader with the chancellor. So Queens North is a special place and you're gonna hear from the leaders of Queens North. So I thank each and every one of them who are here today. And please consider as you're looking for a job, Queens North as your special place to begin your beautiful journey as an educator because you will be their champions. You will change their lives. Dream big, dream out of the box, and have fun while you do it. Thank you so much for being here this afternoon. And we look forward to recruiting some of you throughout this coming year. Thank you. At this time, we'd like uh, Dr. Fusco to share a few words with our students that are joining us today. How do I follow that? Dr. Sir Dewey, you always amaze me. Um, come on, this is just for Queens College School of Education. This is just for you they're doing this. That's how special you are. So we are so, so excited to partner with Queens North. I know we've had a long history together. Um, I'm so excited to now be a part of it. Dr. Sardui and I go back from Queens South. Um, so we have a history. We're really excited to continue our relationship on behalf of our future teachers our students, our families, our communities. This is it, you're graduating. This is the real deal now. This is the big step. This is the thing you've been waiting for is here. And these are the people who are here to help you now. They're gonna transition you. They're here to hold your hand and take you into that classroom. So thank you, thank you, thank you everyone for being here, for being here for our students, our graduates. They're gonna be great in the classroom. They're gonna be great. Um, so we're very excited and, uh, and we'll be out there coming into those classrooms too to see them you know, strut their stuff any day now. So thank you, I wanna um, turn it over to Professor Peroni um, just to see if he has a couple of added things. And I wanna thank him too for always being the person to help pull these things off. No, I, I wanna thank everyone for pulling this together. Actually, I, I just texted somebody. I said, do you know how special it is to get so many folks uh, who are so busy uh, into this environment? And I wanna thank everybody to, to make that happen and, and prioritizing Queens College. Uh, just this year alone in elementary and early childhood, we're sending out two, over 200 wonderful graduates and um, graduates who are so excited to, to work for the, um, and contribute to the DOE. And I, one of the beautiful things about our graduates is that they are so reflective of the communities that we are serving throughout Queens. Just in our graduating group, we have over 25 home languages and, you know, and, and such a, an array of cultures and diversity. And, and we're really just enthused to have um, this reciprocity. I mean, all beautiful learning and teaching is that uh, as was highlighted, is that that um, approach of reciprocity. Uh, so I want to thank you, and and I'm I'm really looking forward to this event, and and uh, really uh, collaborating with everybody here. And again, thank you for 
all that that um, um, who contributed in pulling this together. I know it's it's not an easy event to to uh, kind of um, organize, but thank you to each of you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Fusco and Dr. Peroni, for again for partnering with us and collaborating collaborating on this event and being here today and taking time to join us um, just to give our students, you know, I say our students and our future, our future educators an opportunity to see what's the great things that are happening in Queens North. And so I'm going to just begin us and start us off with just a little bit about the borough office and our offerings and how we support teachers and leaders and our um, partners, our superintendents. Um, and I'm gonna try to get our students to get a little bit involved and interactive during this you know, brief uh, presentation. So let's get started. So something that um, E.S. Sardui mentioned about you know, the teachers that, um, that inspired her, right? So just a little something about wisdom, our wisdom from educators, a little poem that I was presented to, uh, it was presented to me when I first started teaching many years ago. So my principal shared, with, shared this with me. The mediocre teacher tells, the good teacher explains, the superior teacher demonstrates, and the great teacher inspires. And this poem is by uh, William A. Ward. So I just want you to take a minute to think about which of these do you aspire? And I hope that you shoot for the stars and you're going for that great teacher that inspires and, and, and those types of teachers that, ins that we as educators now have, have been able to do to our students, our former students. So let's take a look at our Queens North schools. And here's a map of all of our schools and you'll see our different districts across the map of Queens North. We range from Long Island City, Little Neck, Ridgewood, College Point, Jackson Heights, Elmhurst, just to name a few. And now Queens North is comprised of four community school districts, one high school district, which 169 schools, 25 high schools, 141 pre-K to eight schools, three pre-K centers. We have 142,875 students. 19% of those students are Ls. 16% of our students have IEPs and 6% of our students are in temporary housing. So we have students who come from all over the world. Starting with Kenya, Ecuador, Taiwan, Russia, Egypt, Australia, Mexico, Guatemala, China, Zambia, Colombia, South Korea, India. So as you can see, we are very diverse in Queens North. So let's talk about the top places of birth in Queens North students. Let's get us started. This is where we're gonna ask you to be a little bit interactive and engage a little bit. And so we'll open up the chat for you to do that. We have Nepal, Pakistan, Egypt, India, Colombia. Now I want you to see, take a minute very quickly to take a guess and see the other five, top five places of birth of our Queens North. Can you, can you take a guess? Oh, they're coming in. Ooh, yes. What's the prize, Shirley? <laughs> You're the top winner. <laughs> great, great, great. So let's pull the pull up the rest of the top five. The Dominican Republic. Woo! Bangladesh. Yes. Did we see? Did we see? Yes, I saw some of those come in. Ecuador. China, 
and USA, of course, right? So Queens North students were born in over 100, in 170 countries. So yes. So we saw some of those um, pop up in the chat. So great work. So now we have our, some of our top home languages of our Queens North students. And so we'll start off with our, yes, Nepal, Nepali, Punjabi, Polish, Urdu, Arabic. So let's stop again in the chat, type in the top five, take a guess. Keep them coming, yes. Great, great, great. So let's see, Korean. I don't know if I saw that one pop up. Bangla, yes, I saw that. Chinese, yes, I saw Chinese in the chat. Spanish, and number one, English, right. Good job, everyone, good job. So in Queens North, students speak a combined 124 languages, wow. So now let's talk about why you should teach in Queens North. This is where we uh, you know, talk about what we can offer here. We provide a professional, exciting and supportive environment to a culturally and linguistically diverse population of staff and students alike. And, and this is grounded in our vision and mission. So I'll give you a minute to just take a look at what our work and our focus is in Queens North, of course, our borough and our community school districts and high school district. So if you're looking for a place to teach in a diverse environment and where you can also grow professionally, you're in the right place. So how will we support you? So Queens North, the borough office has a number of teams, right? We'll start off with our division of teaching and learning. And as you can see, we have a group of teaching and learning staff members, um, and they're, de they're dedicated to providing you with ongoing support as you embark on this journey. So how, we will so how will we support and how does that division support you and your students? We have a program where our initiative of our multi-tiered support system of support, which is a collaborative initiative designed to improve, excuse me, reading outcomes for all our students by utilizing universal screeners and data-driven instruction. We also have math professional learning communities. It's just to name a few, which provide opportunities for our teachers to meet, connect and share best practices and mathematics instruction while receiving on-site coaching and support. And right now, you know, we're virtually providing that support as well. So for these professional learning opportunities, you'll have the opportunity to earn CTL credit, which you definitely will need and is required um, in order to maintain New York State, your teaching license. So we provide ample opportunities for you to obtain these credits um, and at the same time, grow professionally. Our Division of English Language Learners um, hosts a numerous professional learning opportunities as well as times to share best practices with other colleagues, as you can see and indicated in some of the pictures that are shown in the field of English language, learn English language learners. Our Division of English Language Learners provides weekly um, policy office hours, on-site and virtual classroom visits to provide feedback to teachers. And just to highlight a few of the PLL uh, offerings, um, including supporting standalone ENL instruction using Engage New York and Core Knowledge Language Arts curriculum, remote learning series for Chinese bilingual teachers, supporting Spanish bilingual home language arts instruction, and increasing academic language development and integrated ENL and science instruction. Um, and that's just to name a few of the supports provided by our Division of English Language Learners. Our Division of Special Education provides a number of supports and resources to support all of our teachers. Uh, it's data-driven and they provide support around data-driven goal setting and progress monitoring to guide specially designed instruction and intervention and quality IEPs you just, we make sure we're supporting you so that you can support our students. They provide targeted supports to create systems and structures for progress monitoring and IEP management, progress monitoring around annual goals. 
and they offer a number of professional learning opportunities, including, just to name a few, high leverage practices for assessment, a four-part series around student-led IEPs. Our Division of Student Services, and this is like incredibly important during this time, we provide supports and services to all our students and staff regarding social emotional needs through virtual and on-site school visits, training sessions, and special initiatives such as um, SEL into academic content, SEAL, which we'll be rolling out and really working through a lot this year, professional learning, which believes that it's important that teachers take the lead on developing explicit, explicit social motion instruction. We also have the part participating teachers and school teams participate in a seven part series targeting professional learning communities where the teams come together to learn how to integrate social emotional learning across academic content. And lastly, but certainly not lastly, they provide a, a myriad of services. We meet with teachers and the, the team meets with teachers and school leaders on a variety of topics, such as addressing attendance, chronic absenteeism and suspensions. And certainly not least, at that least, at least that our data team, right? Our data team, um, we all believe in, in making sure that our work is grounded in data and they really support us in this work. Um, the data team drives all, supports us in drive, making sure all of our decisions are driven by data. Therefore, they support schools with providing timely and useful data, along with resources and training on interpreting and using that data, such as biweekly attendance reports and reports to estimate state accountability. So I really hope that you got a glimpse, just a tiny glimpse of some of the things that we offer at the borough office. Um, but certainly we hope that we have the opportunity to meet with you as a new teacher um, to, to, to join us in engaging and in, in, in training you and supporting you as you go through this journey as becoming an educator. Um, I hope you learned just a little bit and you're ready to come on board with us in Queens North. These inf the, all of this information and resources um, that are shared today will be shared with all of you who are joining us um, later after our sessions. So I just want to just share that with you. And at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Jessica Guanilla, one of our HR directors who will go through and walk you through what, how to begin and, and going through the application process of becoming a teacher with the New York City Department of Education. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shirley. Um, as she introduced me, my name is Jessica Bonilla. I am one of the HR directors for Queens North. I'll be going over on how to apply for the DOE. Hello, everybody. Thank you again for joining us today. I'll be going over on how to apply for the DOE. You will be going on to our website here. It's called Teacher Support Network. Um, take the time to write it down and don't worry if you don't get to it. I have the website on each slide as we go through it. Um, when applying, there'll be three steps to complete a, an application. So once you um, type this in, this will be the screen that you'll be seeing. You have um, three options as a new user here, if you're an existing user, or if you're not even sure, we also have that option to search if you ever worked for the DOE. So here as a new user, we'll be first creating an account, completing a common profile, and then at the end, completing a teacher application. This is what be here. You'll be creating your profile. Your, um, you'll be using an email address. We prefer for you to use a personal email address um, because due to the fact that um, once you graduate colleges, some colleges deactivate your emails and all common responses will go to your email that you sign up for until you receive a DOE email. The next, next step will be you'll be completing your common profile. We'll be asking basic information here. Your name, your SSN, um, your work eligibility, your current address. Your 
your education, your land language proficiency, your experience and references here, also your resume, any um, paid experience, student, teacher, and volunteer service you may have. You will also be um, requesting your work preference in which borough. We'll be asking demographic questions. But then we'll ask you to read our disclaimer and also our release statement. And now you're done with um, the second step of the application. Now we're on to the last step of applying for applying to the DOE. So now you'll be going here to candidate profile. It's gonna be on your left-hand side menu. You're gonna to go to this box. As you see, there is a drop down. You're gonna select teacher or whichever title you are applying for, guidance counselor. Um, you can also apply here. Once you select this, we go moving on. Here, um, some questions may seem a little repetitive. The first part, the first part of the common questions is just a general profile. This would be just specific towards your application, whether you're applying for a teacher or a guidance counselor. So we'll start here with your um, availability. When are you willing to start? Your grade level preference that you'd rather work with. We're also um, asking the geographic preference that you would like to work in. We'll also re start requesting your experience and certification here with TEACH. If you're not sure, they also have right here the TEACH um, website with the state. So if you're not sure if you where you are or if you have any um, questions, you can always reach out to them. And then at the end, we will ask you for your resume and then we'll ask you for a 500 um, mini essay on, uh, you have an option of three questions here. And this will be the end of the application. Please make sure to select submit at the end. Look out for the note, email notification verifying you submitted your application. If you're not sure, we will also send you an, an email stating that you have applied and your application is not complete yet. And thank you again for joining us. Um, once you complete your application, you can please send me your resume and I can start um, sharing it with our schools at Queens North. Thank you. I will now be passing it over to Dina. Thank you, Jessica, for that really informative presentation. My name is Dina Ravel, and I am the Chief of Staff for Queens North. And I'm really excited to see so many of you here showing your interest in our fabulous Queens North schools across our five or four districts. We're doing an elementary uh, K to eight presentation. Um, at, you know, as you embark upon this really exciting career path as an educator. Um, I, I can tell you I've been in um, education for 26 years and it's been a challenging but equally rewarding experience. So um, I, I, wish, I wish the same experience for all of you. Um, I wanna give a special thanks to all of our community school district superintendents who took the time out of their extremely busy schedules to be with all of us today. And at this time, I'd like to introduce our four community superintendents. First, Ms. Madeline Chan of District 24, Ms. Danielle Domango of District 25, Ms. Danielle Genta of District 26, and Dr. Phil Comp Philip Composto of District 30. Yes. <laughs> Superintendent Mango on the line, would you, would you like to start us off? Of course. So hi everyone, really excited to be here today and congratulations for all of those of you who 
are graduating and we welcome you into this wonderful world of education. Um, I did have, uh, I just want to speak briefly about District 25 and the work that we do here, but I have two very special guests who really are going to speak on behalf of the district. We have our principal, Robert Marino, um, to speak just from, you know, the lens of a school leader. And then we have one of our amazing teachers, Caroline Cragen, and I do want to um, give the floor to her. So this slide really talks about our vision as a district. Um, our uh, our uh, strong roots, strong school theme is represented by the tree, which I think is cut off, Lewis, did you? Yep. Um, and, we have 34 schools, eight middle schools, four K to eight, 20 elementary, two early childhood, two pre-K sites, centers, and three K coming soon this year. So we're really excited about that. Over 25,000 children. Um, some of our programs are gifted and talented. Um, we have bilingual programs in Spanish, Chinese, and Korean, um, and offer accelerated coursework in our middle schools um, for Algebra One, Living Environment, Earth Science, and US History. Um, we're always looking for teachers who want to participate in a learning environment. We believe that the best learning happens in the classrooms together, um, but we also have a variety of aligned partnerships in our district that help us build capacity to um, achieve our vision and mission. So over the past three years, we formed a partnership with Bank Street College around early childhood math and K to three. We've also partnered with Metamorphosis Math to support our elementary and middle school math instruction. Um, for our English language learners and literacy work, we've partnered with Marianne Cucciara and the Council for Greater City Schools. Um, Marianne is an expert in the field of English language learners. We have a very strong partnership with Apple. This year we've been working on task development in both in school and remote learning environments and the integration of technology. Um, we've been doing a tremendous amount of work with culturally responsive teaching and learning through our partnership with Dr. Maria Acunelli. And um, we are continue to work in algebra for all with our math students that start our math teachers that start in fifth grade and computer science for all. And of course, we have a wonderful relationship with Dr. Fusco and Queens College. Um, I am a graduate from Queens College, so I know um, the amazing education and the amazing teachers that come out of that work. So um, at this time, I'm going to turn the presentation over to um, Ms. Cregan and Mr. Marino. And I wanna thank you guys for being here today to talk about amazing District 25. So take it away. Thank you, Superintendent Domingo. I'm very happy to be here. So happy to be speaking to future teachers graduating from Queens College where I went to school. It reminds me of when I graduated Queens College and I was so excited to be a teacher and I just wanted to continue learning and I wanted to share that passion for learning with children. And now as a principal, I'm in a district that I have that opportunity to continue learning as an educator and also bring that culture of learning to our teaching staff. Superintendent Domingo, who you just heard from, her expectations are that you know, through the lens of student performance and student outcomes, we are always developing ways to build our student strengths and areas of growth. Um, for example, when the data said that our students were having challenges with uh, identifying and processing emotions, uh, we adopted the social emotional program ruler. When we saw subgroups were struggling with mathematics, uh, we became an algebra for all district for the upper grades. We worked with Bank Street for the lower grades when the data showed that our English language learners were struggling with reading comprehension and vocabulary acquisition, we partnered with Marianne Cucciara to address those challenges. You know, and what's special is like, the reason these initiatives produce positive outcomes for our students is because Superintendent Domingo and uh, Deputy Superintendent Dr. D'Antona, along with their team, they learn side by side with us. They, they insist that they do the work while we're doing the work and that translates to me as a principal and my administrative team working side by side with the teachers. Teachers are supported here. 
respected, valued, and given the freedom to use those tools that they acquire while working here. So 30 years later, as now I'm a principal after I started my career so long ago, I still get to be that passionate Queens College graduate who wanted to make a difference. But now I'm given the freedom and opportunity to empower my teachers to follow their dreams and work hard with their students. And I'm just so proud to work here. I'm proud of my teachers and extremely proud of Ms. Cregan, who's going to speak now. Um, and I'm sure you'll agree, she's wonderful. Hi everybody, my name is Caroline Cregan. I am so thrilled to be speaking with all of these excited, um, passionate teachers just beginning their teaching journey. Um, I'm gonna to speak to you a little bit about my own experience in, let's get this out of the way, in District 25. Um, and so thank you to Superintendent Domingo, Dr. D'Antona and Mr. Marino. Um, I certainly would not be here without their support. So this is my ninth year teaching in the Department of Education. Um, I've been at PS120 for five years now. I've taught in almost every single special education classroom there is. Um, and PS120 has really been home for me. Pictures. But um, one thing that I feel really passionate about is mindfulness, and I bring that into my classroom every day. So if you guys are going to uh, be willing to indulge me, we're going to do a little bit of a visualization activity today. Um, so I completed my yoga, yoga education training, um, a 200-hour certification program, thanks to Principal Marino, um, and it's really carried me through, you know, lots of hard times myself, but also supporting my students and understanding how to cope with these big feelings. Um, but we're going to do visualization. So if you feel comfortable, you are going to allow your eyelids to flutter shut. And if not, you can gaze on a fixed point. This is going to allow you to focus your attention inward. We're going to take a collective breath, which means a breath all together, filling your lungs, filling your belly, deepening your breath, and breathing out for five, four, three, two, one. Take a moment to check in with yourself right now. How are you feeling? And today we're going to visualize our future selves. Imagine one year from now. You're looking down the end of your first year teaching. Congratulations. We are not gonna focus on the challenges in this visualization, rather the supports that are going to help us to, to get through those challenges. Thank you. Um, and so what are you going to need to get there? One year of teaching. What supports are going to carry you through the tough times? Also think to yourself, what matters most to me? What qualities does my future school or district have? As we breathe in and out one more time, I want you to think about these words that you've identified. As you take your last biggest breath of the day, you can flutter your eyelids open. And if you have a pencil and paper close to you, take a second to jot them down. The things that popped into your mind first should anchor you in your search for the perfect district and the perfect school for you. And if today, as I'm speaking, anything resonates with you in my own experience, I want you to notice that. So in District 25 and at PS120, I've been a part of a lot of the initiatives that Principal Marino and Superintendent Domingo spoke about before. Um, um, some of those are the Cuchiara cohort. I was able to work alongside Marianne Cuchiara. Sorry, there's an airplane going by. Um, and that has really allowed my students both um, students with disabilities, but also English language learners to really unlock understanding of complex, compelling texts. Um, it's a framework and I was able to invite, uh, you know, teachers from across our district, but also leaders in our district and Marianne herself to give me feedback on my own teaching, which is the most valuable practice I can engage in. Um, another uh, program that I'm a part of is working alongside um, leaders in our district, OEA, which is the Office of Equity and Access, uh, along with students and parents 
um, in our district equity meetings, our monthly meetings. Uh, right now, we are really evaluating the disproportionality of referrals for special education services. And this is an issue that is near and dear to my heart as a special educator. Um, Algebra for All, as was mentioned before, is a program that I was involved in. It was a two week intensive session over the summer and then three years to support you throughout the process of implementing these routines. Um, it really allows students to um, unlock understanding of complex problems and rigorous work. And as a struggling student myself, when I was in elementary school learning math, um, it really is valuable to be able to not only deepen my own understanding of conceptual knowledge, but facilitate conversations with my students. Teacher leadership has been a program that I've been a part of for a number of years now within my school, and this gives me the opportunity to collaborate with administrators. I'm missing that word there, but um, I have been a part of decision making processes. I've been able to lead inquiry groups in my school. Um, I've opened up my own classroom to colleagues of mine, which is a little bit less um, high stakes and support them in their learning and coach teachers as well. Learning Partners is a program that I loved and uh, it was our school as, long, uh, as well as two other schools in the district and we would participate in intervisitation. Uh, a quote that really stands out to me from Learning Partners is the answer is in the room and it allows us to really capitalize on the shared collective knowledge of so many amazing teachers and administrators and professionals throughout our district. Um, and last but not least, I've been able to participate in other programs. Um, thanks to Principal Marino, um, I was working with the Metropolitan Museum of Art with a professional learning community for a year, as well as my yoga training. And all of these opportunities would not have presented themselves without the leadership and support of District 25 and PS120. Um, also, I've been so lucky to be able to meet um, two of our chancellors. I have not yet had the pleasure to meet um, Chancellor Misha Porter yet, but um, I'm hopeful for the future. I feel so, so thrilled to, to speak to you guys today about my own experience in District 25. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Superintendent Domingo and the District 25 team. Um, Without further ado, I'm going to introduce to you Superintendent Chan. Our tech issues have been resolved. Superintendent Chan. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Hello, Dean Fusco. So nice to see you and Dr. Perone and everybody on the platform. Thank you so much for this opportunity to share with new teachers how um, amazing District 24 is. I've been the proud superintendent for the last last 12 years. District 24 is the largest district in New York City. Um, approximately 44,000 students in my charge, pre-K through eight. And we always talk about the size of the district. And then we talk about how we make it very clear to families that every situation is individual. And we support people on an individual basis and that goes for staff as well. So we are extremely proud of our teaching staff and super excited to have others interested in joining our team. It is my pleasure to introduce Assistant Principal Aiello, who's going to talk a little bit about his experiences in the district and then share some information with you. Hi, Rob. Hi, thank you so much um, everyone for this opportunity to speak to you all. Um, I also graduated from Queens College and I know that in District 24, there are many, many Queens College graduates, not only as teachers, but in administrative positions throughout the district. So District 24 definitely knows how to take care of our Queens College friends. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna begin sharing my screen right now. Okay, Community District 24, going through just some of the statistics from the district. Um, our enrollment is, um, from what Ms. Chan said to, to right now, somewhere between 48 to 56,000 uh, students. Um, that makes us the largest district in all of New York City. And with that large district comes a lot of resources and a lot of opportunities for hire. So if we're looking for a position, District 24 definitely has a lot of opportunities. 
As you can see by the breakdown of race and ethnicity, we are also one of the most diverse districts in the city. Um, when we look at the economically disadvantaged and also students with disabilities and English language learners, we also have a great deal of diversity there. And it definitely is that diversity, which is really the strength of District 24. Um, a little bit about our mission. Team 24's mission is anchored in an individualized approach to meeting the needs of all District 24 stakeholders. We pride ourselves in the fidelity of our work, supporting all for the good of the students and the high expectations we set forth for our students and one another. We find the joy in our work and demonstrating how we add value to the system every day. The impact of our efforts are revealed through our teamwork, celebration of differences, strong collaboration, and respect for one another. This mission empowers us to stand stronger together. In light of recent COVID-19 pandemic, we will be emphasizing student and parent supports through culturally responsive education so that all stakeholders have a voice and feel empowered through engagement in their individual and group learning. Um, and speaking about um, Ms. Chan, the superintendent who introduced me, who you work for matters. And as you get older and you begin to take on jobs, you'll really understand that the person at the top really does matter. And when I think about Ms. Chan, a, a quote about leadership has always come to my mind. And it's the quote that says, leadership is communicating a person's worth and potential so clearly that they are inspired to see it in themselves. A leader can only do so much by themselves, but it's extremely important for a leader to be that inspirational source for other people so they can really be our best selves. And we're really, really blessed in District 24 to have Ms. Chan as our superintendent because I know she inspires many throughout the district, uh, including me. So we are very, very blessed for that. Um, moving on to our schools. Community School District 24 represents 55 schools serving students in grades pre-K through 12 that are geographically located in Ridgewood, Massbeth, Glendale, Middle Village, Elmhurst, Corona, Woodside, Long Island, and Sunnyside communities of the Borough of Queens, New York. The district is comprised of 26 elementary schools, seven middle schools, six K through eight schools, one secondary school, and 15 high schools. Additionally, there are two charter schools in the district and the district serves a population of about approximately 58,603 students from, from culturally diverse backgrounds. Just going through some initiatives and programs we have, Algebra for All, an advanced literacy initiative, strong social emotional programs, pre-K mosaic program, culturally responsive instruction. We have diversity grants, very, very large into the social justice committees, including a strong dual language program. We have parent and student ambassadors, a computer science for all, and a strong leadership academy. These are our people of our leadership team. Ms. Chan, we all know is the superintendent. Ms. Cacavelli, who's the deputy superintendent, is online right now as well, and she's been a tremendous help. And we can see the rest of the support team on the list below. Diversity in District 24 schools and student staff. Diversity of all groups in a prior, is a priority in District 24, and we will adhere to the Chancellor's core values in order to create a diverse population in our schools. The hiring of staff is overseen by the principal along with the committee of various stakeholders at the school level. And it has been a major emphasis of District 24 to not only try to have more diversity within our schools, but also the staff that makes up those schools. COVID-19 safety protocols, the health and safety of our students and staff is our primary concern. District 24 schools have adhered to the Center for Disease Control Department of Health and New York City Department of Education guidelines to ensure the safety of all of our students. And we complete, continue to implement all safety measures and modify these plans as new guidance is released. Um, we all know the negative impacts COVID-19 has had not only on the education, but within our lives in general, in order to support COVID-19 learning loss, District 24 schools have taken the following steps. We've trained staff on distance learning and virtual small group instruction, conducted ongoing formative assessments and provided small group after school programs virtually and in person. District 24 will continue to address the social and emotional needs of our students in the various ways. Student check-ins, 
counselor and teacher office hours, student clubs, after school activities, mentoring programs, fun Fridays, advisories. We have ongoing parent workshops on mindfulness and wellness, social emotional learning, culturally responsive and instruction aligned to students' individual needs. And we also focus in on turning on those cameras, the initiative, our SEL lunches, and our New York State SEL benchmark training. Um, so that's the basic things that are going on in District 24, but I also wanted to give a, a certain level of uh, personal, um, just what I've experienced in District 24. And when we talk about District 24's priorities, focusing on improving student achievement and academic levels, this past year has been very, very traumatic, not only for the school community, but the, the communities in general. And when I think about what we've been through in this past year, it brings up um, the story or kind of the myth of the Chinese character for the word crisis. And this is something I've spoken to my teachers about over this past year. The Chinese symbol for the word crisis often is, comes from two different characters. One character is the character for danger. And we all know that when we're living in a crisis, that there's a certain danger there. And we've experienced that danger when it comes to the health and it comes to the um, emotional and academic issues that have gone on. But the second character that makes up the word crisis is the symbol for the word opportunity. And District 24 has really seen this crisis as an opportunity for us to redefine and redesign the ways we see education and the way we implement education with an eye on how do we implement our education in a more fair and more just way for all, where we're bringing in all the different viewpoints of our stakeholders. And this has always been an emphasis from Ms. Chan and all the rest of the leadership of District 24, as how do we bring in all parent, student, and stakeholders point of view? Because when we build consensus, we have buy-in and we have much more of an emotional adherence to what we're trying to accomplish here. So that's something that's, that's really always reminded me of District 24 is that we persevere through the things and the difficulties in life and we find ways to make our communities better and stronger. Um, as you finish up your college career, it's natural that you ask yourself, well, where am I gonna work? What will my job be like? The question I would ask for you to ask yourselves and what potential new hires should ask of themselves is, what do I wanna get out of my career? What do I want for myself? I know that every day when I get up, I enjoy coming to work. Each day fills me with a sense of accomplishment, a sense that I'm affecting the world and my community in, in a positive way. And if that's something that interests you, then District 24 is definitely the place for you. We're one of the biggest, most diverse districts in New York City. And if you want to affect change in the educational system and the lives of our youth, then please speak to uh, a representative from District 24. Every day I go to work, I feel like I belong to a team. And I really enjoy that sense of belonging. I feel I'm part of an incredible school, a vibrant community. And I would, on a personal note, I would say from the Corona Ice King and Mama's in Corona to Rose's Pizzas and Math Beth, we really have the best food in New York City. And District 24 is a very, very strong community. And it's made for those who want to be part of something special about New York City. So if that's something that interests you, I would definitely recommend coming to District 24 because there are very, very special things going on here. And if you want to affect the future of education, District 24 is definitely where that's happening. So um, thank you for allowing me to be part of this. And thank you, Queens College, for getting me started in education and setting me uh, on the right path uh, for success. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much, District 24. Um, at this time, it's my pleasure to um, introduce Deputy Superintendent, Dr. Tara Davidson, to uh, speak to us a little bit about District 26. Tara? Thank you, Ms. Ravel. Good afternoon, future teachers. 
I'm so excited and honored to be here today, um, this afternoon in partnership with our executive superintendent Sardui, our Queens North colleagues, and two of my partners in the district, our special instructional liaison, Mr. Anthony Anzarello, and say hi. And of course, um, one of our amazing teachers and one of our District 26 Big Apple finalists, Mr. Justin Barilla from PS133. And as the proud deputy superintendent representing District 26 today, um, in partnership with Superintendent Genta, we are home to 28 pre-K through eight schools serving over 17,000 students across the district. And one of the things that we really think about and across all of our work is how we ground and connect it to Simon Sinek's work, Start With Why. So I'm gonna start a little bit about our why here in District 26 and what it is that we do, and that is our students. Our work is specifically grounded in what it is that they say, what they need, um, and how we can make sure that all of our actions are done in service of increasing their achievement levels, their learning, engagement, and most importantly, their opportunity to be innovators and creative citizens for our future. And so with that, everything that we try to do is around inspiring play and creativity across our classrooms, really where they can direct and design their own learning um, especially focusing on areas in STEM and computer science um, as we move into more, more um, career and college readiness opportunities. When we look at Simon Sinek Circle, after we go through the why, the next part is the how. And so in District 26, our how is together. Together is better, and it's our vision and how we roll in order to serve our students. We operate across many collaborative communities of practice, where all of our stakeholders work together to make sure that our students have a cohesive educational experience from the time they're four, soon to be three, three 3K in the house in District 26 coming soon, um, till they're 14. And really that is because we are one of the only zone districts in New York City. And so we can organize our teachers and school leaders and parents and students around a cohesive experience um, from four to 14. And last but not least, the center of Simon Sinek Circle is our what. And that is really ensuring that every member of our community is leading with equity in mind from our students to parents, our teachers and school leaders, and that they have the opportunity to be authentic leaders across the district. Um, and with that, I want to introduce you to our one of our incredible teachers who truly lives this vision and mission for District 26. He is the leader of our District Mega Math uh, Collaborative Learning Community, serving all of his colleagues across the district. Someone who exemplifies what we look for in our classes, empowering students to run math groups as mentors for their peers, and really turning all instruction over to our kids. So going back to our why, I hope you really think about your why, and I'm going to let Mr. Brilla explain to you a little bit more about his experiences teaching, learning, and leading in District 26. Thanks, Mr. Brilla. Thank you, Dr. Davidson. Pleasure to be here today. An exciting time. Uh, congrats to the, the Queens College uh, almost graduates. What, what an exciting time um, to have the, the fresh minds and fires of new, new teachers and educators coming into the field. So we're, we are excited for that. Uh, this is also a special day for me too, because I am a current Queens College student in the Ed Leadership Program, and I myself will be graduating in June. So it, it's very exciting times uh, to be here today, but for multi-purposes, um, uh, thank you for, for having me. Um, but the truth is, in all honesty, um, where I am right now in getting my, my degree here in June from Queens College um, has everything to do with the support, guidance, partnership, um, and empowerment that I have received by working in District 26 and also the partnership that I have felt with, with, the, with Queens North. Um, and um, for me, it, it started, I want to kind of just brush upon those four words, support, guidance, partnership, and then to empowerment. Um, uh, for me, it was, it was started with uh, just a, a welcoming um, invite to a math meeting as a participant 
um, and where I had, you know, I, I liked teaching. I was most excited about engaging my students in learning and finding creative ways to connect with them. Um, it was really, I, I was looking for a place to dive a little bit deeper into content and just an invitation into what um, Dr. Davidson was speaking about, about this mega math cohort, which District 26 had partnered with Queens North um, in trying to expand the creativity and engagement in building um, conceptual understanding and authentic discourse in mathematics in District 26. And it was a community and it still is a community, but at the time as a participant, it was a community of K to eight uh, educators. And through that support became guidance. It was like, okay, we're gonna help and provide the supports for you along the way. And then something happened within those cohorts after those first couple of years, because now we're kind of going into, into year four um, where it's something just clicked. Um, and I, uh, through this continual uh, diving into myself and uh, trying to reach my students, um, I just felt the, the support from my own administration in my school to the support of uh, District 26 and um, you know the resources that they were providing to Queens North's uh, Queens North's um, you know multi programs that they were offering to uh, as support as well um, to really lead this part of this next part of the piece which was this empowerment piece and I saw the value in not only as um, as uh, um, Ms. Wheeler Massey was mentioning earlier about teaching that, in, that inspires, um, but that taking that leadership and giving it to our students. And through that, through all of this process and working through this mega math cohort, um, it had led to this initiative that, that I had started called Math Mentors, in which our, our fourth and fifth grade students were now be creating classrooms of their own and creating um, these inquiry investigations for younger grades. Um, and it was really, it's, it started with an invitation um, and it led to this um, thing that I would have never uh, experienced or, or imagined in my whole life, um, leading to seeing these students, I can see the empowerment that they're, that they're doing um, in, in these younger students' lives. And now it leads even into what, what we're continuing to do now is building this through middle school. I started to mention in the beginning, but I'm, I'm a fifth, fifth grade teacher, a departmentalized fifth grade teacher at PS 133 in Belrose. I've been there for 15 years. Um, and so for the last three, four years operating this uh, math mentors program, um, I now have students in sixth, seventh and eighth grade who continue to support my current fifth grade mentor. So now there's this mentoring the mentors. Um, and so this all comes back to this, what, what Dr. Davidson was speaking about, about together is better. Um, and ultimately our main goal here is inspiring our students, uh, making them, them feel like we're investing in their lives and empowering them. And, uh, and it all goes to the, the support um, guidance partnership that I have felt working here at District 26. So um, I'm really excited to continue this journey as, as the administrative uh, aspect comes into play, but I'm super excited for this new, new group here of Queens College Almost Graduates to, to be part of wherever they decide to go, um, but specifically in District 26, um, that support, guidance and partnership that um, is offered. So thank you for this opportunity. I turn it over to our, our special instructional support liaison, Anthony Anzarello. Thank you, Mr. Marilla. Thank you for those kind words. And I can't agree with you more, Justin. Boy, hello, Queens College. And you have such wonderful choices. District 24, 25, 26, and District 30. All of us, all of them are great districts and you have great choices and it'll be hard for you to choose which one you do want to choose. But let me just share a little bit about District 26. In District 26, we want to ensure that your first year and every year that you're a teacher, that you'll be reminded about the reasons why you chose such a wonderful and such a noble career field. 
We know that our teachers, whether they're brand new or they're seasoned, they want ideas, guidance, encouraging words on building relationships with students, families, other staff members, district representatives, Queens North representatives. You want to enhance your teacher practice. You want to talk about, discuss, and develop some real um, questions and problems that you want to try and support yourself and your school community with. And we want to be the reason, and you want to be the reason why your students succeed. So you'll receive support from school leaders and also from our district leaders, whether it's joining the District Big Apple Ambassador Program or as Justin was sharing, the District Mega Math uh, team, whether it's joining our District Equity team, SEL committee or computer science, there's lots of different avenues and ways that you'll be able to learn and grow your practice in District 26. So we look forward to working with you to ensure that you start your teaching career strong and that you continue to grow your teaching practice, incorporating some of the newest pedagogical practices, but more importantly, feeling great about the work that you do and feeling like you're a part of a team and that you, your students and your school community will depend on you. So I hope and we hope as part of the district, we see you in District 26. Good luck with your choice. We look forward to supporting you and you have really great choices in front of you. Congratulations on choosing such a wonderful field. Thank you, District 26. Next up, we have Dr. Uh, Philip Composto to talk to you about the great things that are happening in District 30. Dr. Composto. Thank you. Good, good afternoon all. And I too am a graduate of Queens College. I've got my undergraduate in early childhood. I have a master's in special education and a master's in administration and supervision. I was lucky enough to get my doctorate from St. John's, which was fully paid for by then Chancellor Crew. So education is my life and I enjoy it tremendously. So I wanna share a little bit about District 30. So, okay. Okay, so as you can see, District 30 is a very large district. We too are like District 24. We have approximately 40,000 children that come from all over the world. Uh, I was a principal in District 30 for 12 years. And as a principal, I used to keep a map on my wall. We had over a hundred spoken languages in our building. So it's a wonderful spot. It includes East Elmhurst, Herm Elmhurst uh, Astoria, Jackson Heights, Long Island City. So as you can see, we're a very large district, but a very cohesive district. Part of our, our mission is always to provide a very supportive environment, a nurturing environment, and we collaborate. We collaborate with our teachers, our parents, even our children have a part of us. Certainly in District 30, our vision is always to believe that all of our students and families and schools come together. We work out all of our situations together and we are preparing our children for the 21st century college and career readiness. So District 30 has five pre-K centers, 26 elementary schools, five K to eight middle schools, I mean, eight, uh, five to eight uh, middle and nine middle schools. Uh, so we have, th uh, at, besides all of that, we have four pre-K centers throughout the district they're located. In addition, we are too taking uh, our 3K in the district, we will be housing them in another 11 schools and two of our pre-K centers. So we're pretty excited about that. We have a variety of programs. One of the programs that we are very proud of is our autism spectrum disorder. We've had that for several years at PS 76. About oh, two years ago, a parent came to me and said, you know, we love District 30, but we did not have a program in our middle school. Their child would have been sent to Brooklyn, but we worked it out and we now have one in our middle school. So we have one in PS 76 and one in 
IS-204. So we have a variety of children and we respect all children and we individualize for all children. So with that being said, we have five schools with gifted and talented programs in them. PS 300 is a citywide gifted and talented program. We are the one who represents the borough of Queens. There is a citywide gifted and talented program in all five boroughs. And we house the one here in Queens. And we are very proud of all of our programs in District 30. One of the pieces that we are the only, I'm gonna say that again, the only district in New York City that provides a dual language program from pre-K right up to high school. As you can see, we have 20 dual language programs. The last one is our Long Island City High School who offers a bioliteracy certificate for our children. So that program is really well sought out by many, many families. They come from different parts of Queens to be a part of our dual language program. We have 20 of our schools participating in universal literacy program. That was a program started by our last chancellor, Carmen Farina, who believed in early childhood. So that is a program that works with our K-2 teachers to increase their pedagogy and ensure that our children have a solid foundation as they go on to third grade. We too, like District 25, have a wonderful math program our Algebra for All program, all of our elementary schools are involved and all of our middle schools. So basically we are preparing our children as they enter into middle school, they will have the opportunity to take the Algebra Regents. We, we, by the year 2024, all schools in New York City will be participating in computer science for all. All 41 of our schools have all kinds of computer labs. Everybody has smart boards, but this computer science program is different. It trains our teachers in a different way for coding in different pieces to prepare our children for the future. So presently we have 19 of our schools that are certified as computer for science all schools. Um, so, we have the ACE program. The ACE program is put into our middle schools. That's a program for our young people who are intellectually or multiply dis disabilities. And we provide them with a solid education, a lot of life skills. Their families are heavily involved in our schools. They really do appreciate the love and nurturing that we give to all of our children. So we have District 75 in four of, in four of our schools that or have an inclusion program. So as you go into these schools, you will see District 75 children working with our general ed children as well. So all of our middle schools are have the college and access for all. What does that mean? That means that all of our middle schools and our K to eight schools work with our children about college readiness and they take them onto college campuses. Part of the deal here is that they will have the opportunity to see several colleges during the year and get a chance to have the feel. Actually, we have brought them to Queens College as well. So we know, especially in this time of the pandemic, that we definitely need our mental health programs. And I am proud to say that 37 of our schools have on sites uh, mental health services. So in addition to our guidance counselors, we work with community-based organizations and school mental health programs to ensure the well-being of all of our children. So we always think of our children and provide a very supportive environment. Through this, we have been able to conquer chronic absences. We ensure that we watch each and every child. 100% of our schools have social emotional learning. And because we are an individual program idea for each child, we don't believe in one size fits all. So each school along with their staff and parents get to choose what programs they want. So we have Sanford Harmony, we have PBIS, Brain Power, Restorative Justice Circles, Peer Mediation, the program ruler, advisory programs, growth mindsets, beautiful me. So it is important for us that our children are both socially and emotionally feeling good and academically prepared for their future.
So we are 100% uh, moved to improve all stars. What does that mean? That means every single one of our elementary schools and our K to eight schools have the opportunity if they do not necessarily have a gym teacher, but every in each period, students get up and do movement so that we ensure that if they do not have enough gym time, each and every period they get up and they get to exercise. So all of our teachers are certified to be moved to improved teachers. We have a wonderful program, MBK, um, working with My Brother's Keeper, by the way, that stands for, working with Bryan High School. And it's such a wonderful thing to watch our young people interact with our high school students. And they really have done a wonderful job. So we have two of our element, uh, middle schools, IS-10, and IS-141, that's not up there. We started this year with IS-141, where the children work together and the high school students become our mentors. And it's really been very successful. We believe in student voice. So all of our middle schools have student government and all of our elementary school have some form of listening to children because our piece is, it's all about our children. So, we are the only district, again, in New York City, if you register your child in District 30, they automatically get a, a bank account for college. And what does that mean? That means when they finally graduate, they will have the opportunity to go to college. This um, New York Kids Rise gives everybody approximately $300. But as the year goes on, we fundraise for our children too. Um, so as you can see, they've, they've already found, uh, donated an additional $1.5 million working with uh, different organizations to raise money for our children. And through this New York Kids Rise, every single child who registers has the opportunity to be a part of this program. It's something we're trying to, in, to get started in all of the districts in uh, New York City. So here's, here's what we live by. This is our motto, this is our being. Always remember to ask, how is this good for all children? So whenever I get into a very difficult conversation, I go back to my sign and put out, always remember to ask, how is this good for all of our children? So that that's, gives you a very, very small piece of District 30, but it's a wonderful spot. And I have a wonderful teacher here from PS, 160, 166, Rebecca Slater, that's going to give you, what does it feel like to be a teacher here in District 30? Rebecca? Thank you, Dr. Composto, for having me here to represent District 30 with you. Um, I do so with great pride and congratulations to all of the Queens College graduates or potential graduates soon. Um, although this year we've all been met with a tremendous struggle, our focus within our district um, and especially within PS 166, continues to be, um, continue making sure that whatever we do, just like Dr. Composto said, whatever we do is good for the children. Um, we wanna provide our children with an education that is safe, that's nurturing and especially, especially exciting and an inviting environment for them to want to come to school. Um, throughout the pandemic, we have made tremendous efforts to focus on the social emotional learning aspect um, throughout District 30, it's district wide. Um, we have many teachers, almost all the teachers have been trained in Brain Power Wellness, which is a program um, within PS 166 that we use the different techniques and the different strategies throughout the entire school day, whether it's, you know, in school or whether it's through virtual learning. Um, there's different techniques and strategies that we constantly use. Um, another focus of ours is on cultural diversity. Um, we want our children to be heard. We make sure to integrate um, our culturally responsive teaching school-wide, different initiatives um, at our school. We have school-wide projects and different initiatives that we do monthly, different themes, whether that's through brain power, whether that's through um, our cultural responsive teaching. Um, and we want our kids, our students to feel comfortable and we want them to feel confident and, you know, brag about their culture and want to learn about each other and, you know, ask each other questions and take ownership of their learning. And through social emotional learning, we see our students becoming more confident and taking ownership of their feelings 
um, and taking pride in themselves and their learning and wanting to learn about themselves and others. So, um, you know, my advice, this is my sixth year, I'm still new at this, but um, my advice for all of you is to have fun and just know that every day that you walk into, you know, your classroom or your school that you're constantly inspiring your students and they're looking up to you, you know, and want to form a relationship with you. And um, just like Dr. Composto said, um, every, every decision you make or every choice you want to make, just always ask yourself, how, how is this good for your children? How will this help them? And how will this help, help them succeed in their future? So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. So thank you, District 30 for that wonderful presentation. So at this time, um, I know we're running short on time, but I um, we don't want to. So if you can hang on with this just a little bit, we wanna make sure we can answer as many questions as, as possible. So again, thank you to superintendents, principals, teachers, every, all panelists that made this presentation possible. And now I'm gonna introduce Louis Latito, who is the field support liaison for District 25, who is going to take us through the Q&A portion of our time, time together today. Thank you, Louis. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Louis Lotito, and we're gonna quickly go through some of the questions that you've had, uh, that you've asked. If you have any questions about anything you've heard today, whether it be about uh, applying and being hired by the DOE or a, a question towards any of the districts that presented today, please click the Q&A button in your, in the, at the bottom of your screen and put your uh, question in there. I know uh, Jessica, our HR director, has been responding to the questions regarding hiring. Um, uh, one of the questions, which I think is important to everyone, is just around, uh, can you apply to be a teacher in the DOE even if you haven't completed your tests yet? Jessica, do you wanna quickly just talk about that? <clears throat> Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So yes, we do encourage you to apply no matter where you are with your certification. And the reason is for that is because the DOE does their own um, evaluation. So once they do the evaluation, they'll be able to determine if they are able to issue you a temporary license until your certification is issued. Also to the pandemic, they do have the COVID emergency certification. Um, which um, once, once you um, have it, it does give you more time to take your exams because that's one of the only things that you don't need to, um, have the, to, to have the certification issue. So when would you say that a graduating QC student should apply to be a DOE teacher? Should they apply now or should they yes. apply when they graduate? They should apply now. Yes, okay. I would say as soon as possible because um, the schools um are starting to know what vacancies they will have for the upcoming year because people are submitting um, either retiring or they're moving out of state. Cool. Thank you. Uh, we have a question regarding uh, for District 30 uh, during um, Dr. Composto's presentation. They're asking specifically what languages uh, do, do your school support in dual language programs? Now, Phil, I'll let you speak in a little bit about that, but I'm also going to put a link in the chat uh, where you can look up the dual language programs and the language that they're in for any school in New York City. So I'm going to put that in the chat so you guys can look at that. But Phil, you want to talk a little bit about the languages? Yes, I certainly will. Thank you for asking. That's a great question. I should have told you. We are dual language is Spanish, but we also have a tremendous amount of Arabic and Bengali children. So we're constantly trying to get an Arabic or Bengali program going. So if you speak one of those languages and you're interested, you let me know because we are building a cadre of teachers in our district that we hope to get those languages going. But presently our K pre-K, we saw in pre-K to high school is a dual language in Spanish. Thank you very much. Um, the uh, just some just some housekeeping. All of the uh, the recording from this video is going to be posted on the same website you use to register, and we're going to be emailing all of you those resources as well. So you have it. Uh, we'll be emailing it to the email address that you used when you registered for the this webinar, and that's going to include the email address that you should be sending your resume and cover letter to. So I know that was one of the questions that kind of popped up as well. Now, um, uh, we have a question from 
Dr. Fusco from Queens College, which I think is a great question. Doctor, you want to read your question? I think I want to ask, uh, and maybe this is the way we can wrap it up, each district to kind of respond to that question. It's a really good question. Yeah, so as you know, the pandemic and the schools being closed did impact what we were able to do with our clinical experiences. Um, we've done as good of a job as we can. Um, you know, students did a lot of video observation and some visits remotely in your classrooms. But I know that many students feel nervous um, because they didn't have maybe the same type of experience as they might have pre-pandemic. So um, what types of supports can you provide our first year teachers? So let's start with um, Queens North. Does someone from Queens North wanna kind of respond about how uh, they support new teachers, especially those coming into the classroom for the first time uh, after the pandemic? Sure, so um, we have our amazing team of, of uh, teaching and learning staff, as well as um, across all of our divisions, uh, particularly our ENL, our L department and um, teaching and learning, our L and special ed. And so what we do is we partner with our superintendents and their teams to identify what the needs are. And so we are looking at and aligning our supports to their vision and their goals. And so one of the things that we're looking to do and what we plan to do is to work to support those teachers and what are the needs are, like what are the needs in the district, what they identify and support. And so we will be creating uh, professional learning opportunities that we will really drill down to looking at, like we know that these things are missing. And so we'll be supporting in that and creating opportunities for teachers to engage. And so in partnering with our superintendents and then working with their principals to identify like what are the needs and bringing those teachers on and, and really want to partner. We, we look to partner because we know that this is going to be something that we have to do, really working towards uh, supporting those new teachers that are coming on who are missing that and have that little that gap in the practical part. So that's what some of the work that we're doing on the borough end and thinking about how we're going to support moving forward for fall. And so I'll just pass it on to any of the uh, superintendents or someone from their team who want to share, you know, and, and talk about like our partnership and some of the work that we would like to do moving forward to address and Let's that. go to um, District 24. Go yeah, ahead, I'm, Madeline. Ha yeah. I'm happy to, oh, I'm happy to jump in. So Dean Fusco, this is a fantastic question. It's one that yes. we're talking about, not only within District 24, but also my colleagues, um, Superintendent Domingo and Genta and Dr. Composto, we work very closely together. I don't want to speak for anyone, but I can tell you that um, social emotional goals are going to come before academic goals next year. Um, we understand that there's been um, a lot of loss, a lot of devastation, a lot of um, just trying to figure out how to move forward on a personal and a professional level. And we will take that into consideration in terms of professional development and supporting all teachers, especially our new ones, and making sure that everyone is um, emotionally ready to teach as well as instructionally ready. And the nice thing about my colleagues and myself uh, we say this all the time, we will never forget what it was like to teach. So we will always put ourselves in the shoes of especially new teachers. And um, I, I feel confident in saying that no matter what district anyone chooses on this platform, they are going to be in very good hands. Thank you. District 25. Hi, everyone. So I echo what um, Superintendent Chan is saying, and I just want to speak a little bit to some of the ways that we support our new teachers and just the vision of our school is that we are all learners. So um, we continue to uh, engage in our teacher teamwork across all of our schools and um, where newer teachers have an opportunity to work with um, more seasoned teachers and engage in inquiry. Many of our schools this year were um, 
took on a team teaching model, even though that there were some staffing shortages where we took some of our newer teachers and partnered them with experienced teachers so they could learn across the year. Um, we were also able to maintain many of our schools, um, teachers, college staff developers for support in literacy. Um, as I had said earlier, our Bank Street work continued this year as well as our math work with Metamorphosis and Algebra for All. Um, all of our schools have teacher leaders um, across grades and content areas and those teachers are charged with supporting our newer teachers um, within individual schools in both content area, um, as well as just the nuances of becoming a new teacher. Um, many of our schools were able to maintain school-based coaches um, during this pandemic. And uh, for next year, we are expanding our relationship with UFT. Um, and we will have four UFT teacher centers, three in our elementary schools and one of our middles. And for those of you who know that work, um, UFT teacher centers, although they are in individual schools, um, teachers across the district have access to those supports. So that's just some uh, a few of the things that we do, um, but really supporting our teacher growth is part of the vision of our Strong Roots, Strong Schools vision and mission. And that's something that, that we really take a lot of pride in. So um, that's it for us. Thank you very much. District 26. Yes, um, completely in agreement and building on what Superintendent Chan and Domingo um, shared. In addition to the supports that we already have across all of our schools, one of the unique things that we found this year was a deepening and a more strong formalization of our supports for new teachers. As part of the pandemic, we really relied on hiring and bringing in a lot of new teachers, especially substitute teachers who weren't used to teaching um, in this form and fashion consistently with students on a daily basis. And so one of the unique structures that all of our schools put into place was what we called substitute academy, or there's no great substitute for a great substitute, um, professional learning plans, where our schools really supported all of the new teachers and onboarding them to what they needed to know, whether it was technologically, curriculum-based, um, teamwork across the building. And those institutes really became the foundation um, for our new teachers this year at every single like iteration of an evolution of um, bringing students in across the year. And so I think that's a structure that our schools will really rely upon and continue to grow uh, in September. I think there'll be a great support for the new teams. Thank you, Tara. Dr. Composto. So I am so proud to work with all these smart people, these great, wonderful, smart people out there. So some of the things we do in District 30 for our special teachers are we have a buddy teacher. So all new teachers will get a buddy teacher. Many of our principals hold uh, new teacher meetings once a week. We have a little breakfast. We talk about what's going on. We survey all teachers to find out their needs. So we do that each and every year, a few times a year, just to ensure we know we're keeping our finger on the pulse. Um, we, we partner with the UFT. Then when I mean that, each year we'll hold tenure workshops for all new teachers so you know what's happening. We hold different workshops for that new teachers ask about. Once again, the UFT also surveys. We work very closely with the borough office. We have these wonderful leads that are really smart. So when we know we have a teacher, could be brand new, could be an experienced teacher that needs support, we send those leads in. Many of our coaches have, um, many of our schools have coaches that also support our teachers. So the most important piece here is that we listen to our teachers. All of our schools in all of our districts in all of New York City have these um, professional learning committees. So all of these schools and teachers have an opportunity to be a part of the decision making as far as professional learning is concerned. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, we were getting a bunch of questions uh, just around specific um, specific things around applying or about licensing. So I'm going to just uh, go ahead and put Jessica's uh, email address um, in the chat uh, again. If you have any specific questions around your application or about what you're, what uh, any specifics around applying for you, 
uh, that might not apply for everyone, just go ahead and email Jessica and she will be able to look into it and to help you um, with that. Um, I also saw a bunch of questions around student teaching in the fall. So we still don't have like guidance yet of what the fall will look like. I know that there was in-person student teaching this year, and it really is a decision uh, both on the school and on the university that uh, the students are from. So that uh, might be a decision that Queens College will be making for the fall as well. I've directed uh, everybody to Professor Peroni for that, but give him some time. <laughs> Don't yeah. bombard him in May, please. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, I see that. I see you did respond with that. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so there's a really interesting question here. Queens North has some of the most competitive districts in the city as a new teacher. What can I do to stand out as an applicant? So I'm going to ask everyone to kind of uh, respond to that again, but just make it really quick, like 30 seconds. Okay. Like elevator pitch. All right. Superintendents. So let's go ahead. Let's start with 24. Go ahead, Madeline. So stand, stand out. Standing out as an applicant for me would mean a well-rounded resume in terms of um, any experience that you've had working with children, certainly um, experience that you had within uh, student teaching and a narrative about um, why you selected the field and what you are passionate about. Thank you. Thank you. So, yep. So yep. I just saw um, Rob Marino, the principal, and, and I think it would be good for teachers to hear from principals around what they're looking for and what stands out. So putting you on the spot, Mr. Marino. Not a problem, Superintendent Domingo. Um, well, first of all, Queens College graduates always impress me. Um, this is Queens, and it's so nice that uh, people from Queens College want to work in uh, the same area that they grew up in, perhaps, and that, they're, uh, that they live in. I always like to see passion. I like to see energy. I like to see people who want to share their passion for learning as kind of like what I did. It's how I got into education, just love learning, wanted to be able to share that with students. So if you could let us know how you feel about how you want to shape the future, what you could um, bring to the, your students and make them feel the same way about the love of learning that you feel, that's something that stands out to me. Thank you very much. District 26. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the same thing and turn it over to Mr. Barilla and have him share what he would like to see in a colleague, a new partner in one of our mm. schools. Thanks, Justin. Yes, to, uh, to, uh, uh, echo um, uh, Principal Marino there. Uh, I think passion passion is key, and I know a lot of new graduates, uh, fellow new new teachers, will, will have a lot of uh, passion. But I think um, what's also key is um, key component is being a team team player um, to be able to be flexible enough to absorb new information, um, and that uh, as somebody mentioned earlier about the classroom kind of being this open place of collaboration, um, somebody looking to be a partner with somebody else in this work. So I'd say, um, you know, team, team player, collaborator, um, and somebody who's got passion and willing to learn along the way. Thank you very much, District 26. And Dr. Composto, District 30. Okay, so I, I agree. Be a team player, always be a team player. Be yourself. Be yourself, show who you are, have your energy up there. Uh, don't be afraid to try something new. They principal ask you to do something, they'll say, oh, I never did, try it, you'll do it. You'll always get the support of the people around you. And most importantly, treat each child the way you would want your child to be treated. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Um, and I guess the last question, it's, it, we might not be able to answer it. Uh, maybe Shirley can give some insight, but um, it's talking about Korean dual language programs. And uh, there is uh, a, a Korean dual language program in district 30, uh, PS 22, which uh, 32, which is in my district. And um, I don't know if there's been any discussion uh, across Queens North 
uh, regarding increasing the number of Korean dual language programs. And maybe Danielle wants to speak about the program at PS32. Um, I don't know if there was a question about PS32. What I um, mm -hmm. can say, you know, just around Queens North and, and the work of our executive superintendent, and I know um, the work that we do as superintendents is we answer um, to the, the demands of our community and things and programs that they want to see. Um, that's always been supported by Queens North. Um, you know, we're proud to say that we have um, the only Korean dual language program in the East Coast that I know of. Um, it is a wonderful program. Um, and if there are parents that would want to see an expansion of that program and there is a demand for it, um, I do know that Queens North and the district would answer to, to those, uh, those requests from parents, but we would want to hear from parents that would be um, willing to, to place their children in these programs. And, and that's why we've expanded over the past few years, like Dr. Uh, Composto has said, in our Hispanic dual language programs, we have increased our Chinese and Hispanic dual language programs across the district. So um, we would say that parents would, should mm -hmm. and can reach out to both the executive superintendent, superintendents, um, if mm -hmm. they would want to see a program like that uh, expand. Yeah, basically if parents want a program, and they request it, it usually we can make it happen. Okay. So we don't have any more questions in the, in the Q and a box. Uh, I'm going to turn it back over to Shirley so she can wrap things up. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Lewis. Um, so, wow, wow, wow. What an awesome afternoon time well spent with great educators and future educators. I just want to thank you for just hanging in that extra time just to be able to really hear from all of our districts and to answer and go through the questions. I just want to thank um, Executive Superintendent Sardui, our superintendents, their teams, their principals, the teachers who join us, our Queens College partners, Dr. Fusco and Dr. Peroni, and our Queens College students. Again, congratulations, and we all wish you well in this next phase of your journey. And we look forward to seeing you in Queens North in the near future. So thank you, everyone. It's been great. And um, again, thank you for spending this afternoon with us. We had an awesome, great time. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Good luck, everyone.